Kids will often ask if a substance is paramagnetic or diamagnetic. Now, officially, all molecules have some diamagnetism, but if there is paramagnetism as well, then it's going to dominate, and so we just say it's paramagnetic, even though there is a small amount of diamagnetism for that molecule. How do you figure out if something is paramagnetic? You need to see that there are unpaired electrons in the structure. Now that's easier for single atoms if your teacher's going to ask you about those, like nitrogen. It's tougher for molecules because you have to use molecular orbitals to figure it out. If any of the molecules in the molecular orbital diagram are unpaired, then you have a paramagnetic compound. Diamagnetism will be the one that dominates if all of the electrons are already paired. Here, I have an example of nitrogen. Now, if you break nitrogen's electronic structure down, you'll see that there are two electrons in the 1s orbital, two electrons in the 2s orbital, and three electrons in 2p orbitals. You can draw electron configuration diagrams for that vertically. There are three 2p orbitals. There's always three orbitals when you're talking about the p subshell. There are two electrons in the 1s, that's 1s2. Two electrons in the 2s, that's 2s2. And three electrons in the 2p. Now, uh, I think it's Hun's rule that says you spread them out before you double them up. And so I'm going to spread out those three electrons here is my electron configuration diagram for ground state nitrogen atoms. You'll notice that these electrons here are unpaired. And so there are unpaired electrons in ground state nitrogen. And so we would say that this particle is paramagnetic. When you are given molecules, I'm going to choose a very easy one like H2. You're going to have to combine those atoms or atomic orbitals into what we call molecular orbitals. If you don't know what I'm drawing here, then uh, you probably don't have to worry about it. But when the 1s orbitals overlap with each other, you're able to make a sigma 1s molecular orbital and a sigma 1s antibonding orbital. H2, well, each H, I should say, brings one electron with it. And so each H on its own is paramagnetic. But once the two atoms combine, you're able to put those two electrons into the lowest energy molecular orbital, the sigma 1s. And so in H2, the molecular orbitals, all of the electrons are paired. And so H2 as a molecule does not have paramagnetism, and diamagnetism dominates. Your teacher would probably say H2 is diamagnetic whereas N on its own, or even H on its own, is paramagnetic. It's all about figuring out if all the electrons are paired. The end. For single atoms, you can use an electron configuration diagram. For molecules, you'll need to know a little bit of molecular orbital theory. Thanks for being with me, and best of luck.